So we are in the midst of the Suga of Bishul Nochri, and I wanted to address a few questions that we did not deal with in the Shia last week. But just for the sake of clarification, we need to a moment go back to the fundamentals. Lamo Asro Chachomim Bishulei Nachrim. There are two different approaches in the Rishonim. What seems to be a stira, the Divrei Rashi, the Divrei Rashi, Avoy the Zora Lamed Hey Omed Beis. Rashi says that the is says Mishum Chasnus. If we can have the Rashi on the screen, Matoyim. The mission of the Zora Lamed Hey Omud Beis. Here we are, Lamed Hey Omid Beis, and we scroll down a bit. Ela Devorim shall oiv de kechavim asurim ve ain isurim isanoa. Cholav shechol ve yakum ve ain isurim ve pas ve shemen ve hashlokois, rashi, hashlokois, kolda ve shabishloi oiv ve kechavim, afilu ve klitoya, does there's no shasham ve chavis asuris. Bekulu mishum chasnus. All these asurim are mishum chasnus, which means benoiseim. Chazal wanted to drive a wedge and build a moat, a social moat between Yisrael and Omes Hu Oilam. You could work together, you could do business together, but Chazal wanted to minimize socializing. Don't eat together, don't go out together. So the reason they answered Bishon Nochrim is Mishum Chasnas. However, if we turn two pages, Lamet Chesom Adalaf, Rashi seems to have a different approach. And if Lamet Ches Omud Alef, at the top of the Omid, the beginning of the page, so, first the Gemara wants a Dashen from a Posuk, Bishulakum, and then the Gemara says, Midrabonon, the Kro Asmach the Balna. Rashi writes, Midrabonon, Shalo Yehe Yisrael Rogel Etzloi, Bemachal Uve Mishtaviachi Leno Dover Tome. Hagos Ashri in Avoida Zora, Pedic Bays, Simachov Ches. Hagos Ashri writes, The Nafkamen and Ahaloko would be. So sometimes you have a tap show like a chont. When you eat a chont, not always it is obvious what went into the shoot or a soup. Sometimes you just have a hard boiled egg. You see what's in there. So if the time, the reason he gives me some chasnus, the issa would be, regardless what type of a dish it is. But if the issa is machashash machalasasuros, if you see, all you have here is an egg. Besides an egg, there's nothing here. So there would be no cheshash mochalas However, if we are medayeg the Russian Rashi, and we still have it on our page, let's go through this Rashi again. Midrabonon. Shelo yehe yesol rogel etzlo yibamachal uvemishta v'yachileno dovor tomoy. It's not about the chashash right here and now. It's not about what you're eating right here and now. Maybe it's macholas asuris. No. Shaloye is all rogel etzloi. If you're going to eat together, then sooner or later, you're going to be nechshel and macholas asuris. Just like the chashash bin oiseyam chasmes. It's not about right here and now. It's not about Oh, you're going to fall in love with his daughter. No, his daughter isn't told me. He doesn't even have a daughter. It's about the long run. So Rashi, even if we say the Isra is Shash Machalas Asuris, it's not about here and now. And therefore, according to both reasons, it applies to every Tav show. And not only to a top show in which there might be a teroidus of macholis asuris. However, the Gemara says there is no isabishalakamoni. 
אין הוא נאכל כמו שיחי. טור איזוב סיב קוד נאלף. קוף יוד גימל, סיב קוד נאלף. When the Shulchan Ork writes, there is no Isra. אוני על דבור המועל ומשוך ומלוכם, ותאז explains why. משום חסנוס. Are we together? I'm, I'm getting it. Okay. So, Kuf Yud Gimel. Maybe we should start with a tour on Kuf Yud Gimel. I'm H-133. from Tool Kuf. So, either the Shulchan Aruch or the tour, Kuf Yud Gimel. The tour brings both reasons. Shem Yechenen Adoratomai. And as well, okay, so we have the Shulchan Aruch. Dove she'ein onecho kemo shichai, the Taz writes, Atam, the ikara gzeire mishum chasnos, ve dove she'ein oicho shuv kol kach eino demaz men chavero yolo. It's all about socializing. And Chazal don't want you to socialize and be invited over to his home, invite him over to your house. At the end of the day, tragedy might strike and it'll cause assimilation. So the Taz explains the halachis based on the approach that it's all about chasnos. If we go over to the tour in Kofi Yud Gimel, I assume you discussed this topic last week. If we have a guy or a goya cooking in a Jewish home. So... Let's go to the beginning of Kuf Yud Gimel. We go back to the very beginning of Kuf Yud Gimel. I think one, here we are, here we are. Shlok HaShav Islam, Agoy, Asurim. Next page. Loi Surim Bishlam Agoy Bebeisai. So the tour, quoting Rabbeinu Avram, brings both reasonings, both chasnus and shemayachilenoi devorim temayim. The Rambam, פרק י"ד, הלוך את תס מחולס אסורייס, writes, the Isser is משום בנויסי. What would be the נפקא מנה between the two approaches? I quoted the Goas Ashri, and I said, according to Rashi, the Goas Ashri is not really right. So even if we're dealing with a dish, in which it's obvious, no macholas asurais. Still be, would be also, even according to Rashi Daflam et Ches, shalo yehe rogel etzloi v'machel u'v'mishna v'yachileno dover tomei. What about a mummer, a Jewish mummer, machal shabbos v'fares? Let's have a look at the Pischei Tshuva, Kuf Yud Gimel, Siv Kodn Av. Very first Pischei Tshuva in Simen, Kuf Yud Gimel, Yeredei. I just want to make a general comment. Pischei Tshuva was one of the earliest to write a sefer, which is essentially a compilation of Tshuvas. Here we are, here we are. The Pischit Tshuva is a compilation of Tshuvas. Throughout the ages, the earliest world wrote Tshuvas, and there was such a vast accumulation of Divrei Torah, of commentary in the Tshuvas. So many Achreinim followed the footsteps of the Pischit Tshuva. He was the first. Shari Tshuva and Shulchan Ochorachayim follows the footsteps of the Pischei Tshuva in Yoredei, which is essentially a compilation, a liquid of Tshuvas. And then comes along the Darkei Tshuva, who was 150 years younger than the Pischei Tshuva, 
And the Munka Cherov, the Dark Cherov, the father of the Minka Zalazar, <coughs> in his Sefer, he accumulated many of the Chuvas that were written in the 150 years between the Pisca Chuvah and the Dark Chuvah. Many other Svan are of the same nature. So let's have a look at the first Pisca Chuvah, Kufi Yud Yemen. I am Bereita Vishema Marit, because of the Ikar Akzer Hoysa Mishim Chasmus. And that is agreed upon by most of the Rambam The Rambam writes Chasmus. Rashi in the Mishnah writes Chasmus. The Taz that we just saw writes Chasmus. And that is the majority of it. I am the safe at the Ferris of Moshe Shekosov. The Lafi Tam said, Shori Bishel Shel Mumam. The Mishum Chasnus Leka. El Shoyu Oita Mevoa Bebisoyse, Shemi Yechaleni, the Boromis Uru, Murafize, Gambisho Shal Numeroso. Tavaka Koifel of Horotel, the Kolov Shemi Hileni, the Boromis Uru, my Sham. Urafize Hodin, Mumel Hala Shabbos, Perfessi, or the Koratoira. Then it's also, however, because most Achrainim. Yeah, we go over to page two with just a few words. The dinoi ka'ovet ka'chavim. Gam ken also. So bearing in mind that the majority of poiskim maintain that the ikar tam is chasnus, not shami So the child of a mumar could be the biggest sedekas like Sora Emenu, like Devoira Hanavuo. So, Chasnus is irrelevant. It's a Jewish family, Jewish people. So, what would be the Cheshash of Chasnus? So, the Napkam and Aloha would be Muma. The Primagodim is Machmio. Not a Nirade Kufu Gimel, rather. Eurachaim Simen Shin Chofei Eishel Avram Siv Kotm Chofei Shalash Echubas Maharam Shik Eurachaim Reish Pei Alef. So some are going to argue, Mumar Dinoi Ka'oi Ve'Kechavim. So just like there's an Isra Bishorakam by a Goy, same will apply to a Mumar. The Feres Namoish according to the Pesach Echubas says it depends. And the two reasonings, and the two tamim, and because most of the maintain the time of Chasnus, then the fact that he's a mumar and the mechal shabbos befres is irrelevant, because his daughter could be a bas yisol sheder, like any other, and that is why most achronim are made by a mumar. I don't know whether we can have it on our screen, but the Kafa Chaim, Kofi Udim on Sif Kotm Aleph, I'm just walking to my swarm shafter to take out a Kafa Chaim. The Yaakov Chaim Soifer was one of the great Sephardi Poiskim. And what is unique about his Sefer, Kafa Chaim, is the combination of Halocha and Kabbalah. He was a great Poisik, but also a big Mumchi in Kabbalah. And the Kafa Chaim Siv Kotnalef writes, Ika Agzele Mishum Chasnus, calling the Taz, what a few times there showed a bishop shall move out. The Mishum Chasnus Leka. However, there are other times, and many quotes the same to Ferris Lemotion as the Pisrei Shuva. And that is his Psak. So, this aloha, whether we ask a bishop Mumar, depends on the two reasonings. So, the conclusion of the Kafachaim is. Given the midi de rabbonani, nere de bidi yeved ain't less on. 
First of all, we're dealing with an Isidah Rabbanon. Sveike de Rabbanon Lekulo. And therefore, there is no need to be Machmio. Let's go back to Kufiud Beis Sif Aleph. Kufiud Beis Sif Aleph, we discussed that two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, my she was a general introduction about the Benoisayim. And we brought all the halachas that Chaza Asid Mishum Benoisayim. Pasakum, Givina Sakum. So, Sif Aleph, we discussed it in our previous year, which was two weeks ago. Then I'm all right. What does it mean, Bomokum de Lesna, Meleka Mishum Chasnus? Writes it as Kigon She'ein Lo Bonim. Loi Plug Rabbonon. Same writes to Shachsif Kotendalin. It is already underlined. Philobomokum de Leka Mishum Chasnus, Kigon. Also, the law mission bito shall mummer. Oi noisim, omru, elemisim bnois, or the homish, you may as a yes was that. And that's the same spot as I quoted a moment ago, a few minutes ago, Rashi, regarding Shemiachel and Machoras Asurus. Shall I hear Rogel Esloy Bamachel of a Mishta Yachil and I do a Tommy? So some are crying and argue. If there are more paskins, there's an iser pas akum afilu b'mokim deleke mishum chasnes. Would the same be regarding a mumar? Would we say, but a mumar has a din of a goy, and is there a din of a goy that bishul akum should be also, even though there is no chashash chasnes? That is the approach of the prima godam and the maran ship. But I think it's more reasonable the Pischei Tshuva and the Teferes Lemoshe. And I'll explain why. What we learn in the Ramah, based on the Taz and the Shach, is Pasakam is also, even though the baker is a Catholic priest, and Catholic priests observe celibacy, they don't get married, they don't have kids, doesn't make a difference. Today the baker will be a priest, tomorrow will be a shoemaker, and the day after tomorrow will be a, a trainer. Doesn't matter. A guy is a guy. Pasakum is also, Bishulakum is also, regardless whether he has boys or girls or whether he has children at all. But a mumar, yes, Lechumra. Chazal decreed he has a din of a guy. But it depends on which realm. When I say him, it's not Shaykh at all because he has a din of a guy. Has no bearing on his family. And therefore, when I say him, would not be relevant at all. It's not the same as a guy that happens not to have children. That is coincidence. The Rambam writes in one of his foreign Milosei Goyen, Kosolo Yavro ben Etzem le Mikro, Areu Kibuti Yeridea le Dabra. There's a difference between Etzem and Mikro. So, first of all, we spoke about Mumara. And I think there is no Cheshash, Bishulakim, if you have a nun from Chef. And therefore, if you have a restaurant or you're making a Shabbos or a kosher hotel and your main chef is a Jew, beyond doubt, even though he isn't from, you don't need to treat him like a guy. And there is no Yisrael Mishwak. Prima Godem and Meram Shikor Machmio. But most of them, like the Kafa Chaim writes, are not regarding a non from Jew, even though he's a mumar and a Mechala Shabbos Befresi. It's not the time to discuss Mechala Shabbos Befresi, this man and say, whether they make a mumar. That's a huge discussion. 
and maybe at some point we'll discuss it. I made my opinion clear in Shah's to this Minchas Noshal Chayla Kalaf Simon Yud, but that is a separate discussion. We're not going to get into it now. Two more topics I wanted to briefly discuss. Many present day Gedolim have different opinions about various different snacks. Are they? So usually in Etzesur, when they say chips, they don't mean potato chips. So when I was a little boy, most of the potato chips were wise potato chips. I don't even know whether they have a heksha today. So usually in America, when you say chips, it's potato they chips. They have a OU. They have the OU heksha. They've had it so, for... They have had it for many, many decades, but uh, it's not especially not especially Israel, so it needs explanation. Okay, in Israel, usually when we say chips, we don't mean potato chips. It's that's a snack, or rather chips. It's part of it's part of a suda, which is you know those little pieces of potato chopped up and uh, uh, I don't have pictures. But there's a difference between the crisp and extremely thin potato chips that sell as a snack and chips that is usually comes together with rice and meat and it's part of a meal. How do we define Eula al Shulchan Malachim? So somebody wrote a contest, which to me was both amusing and stupid. And he did research in Buckingham Palace and in the King of Norway. And there aren't many monarchs today in the modern world. But Spain still has a king named Felipe. And the royal family in England is very well known. I think Sweden has a king. Norwegia has a king. Most of these kings have no executive powers at all. And it's more ceremonial. So somebody wrote a contest, Ola Shulchan Aruch, and he did research of all the king's palaces. And I made it clear in that letter, Ola Shulchan Aruch doesn't necessarily mean king. He said, Chazal wa choishish libno yisayim. So, Tevye the milkman, his son would marry, the king's daughters would be the craziest and most far fetched idea one could even imagine. So Tuvia the Milachiger's son won't marry the king's daughter. means a An important suda. A suda in which people would invite each other and you'll dress your best suit and try to be polite and respectable and that is what Chazal was worried about. Worried about socializing. So Oilan Shulcha Malachim is a Sauda Chashuva. It's not about kings and queens and princes. And therefore, the main discussion is, is this Tafshal something people would invite the guests to share? And that is what we saw a few moments ago in the Taz. The Taz writes, or what is the reasoning? Because you won't invite a person to something that is not an important dish. So what about potato chips or popcorn or snacks? Snacks are usually not part of a suudo, and therefore yesh mokam. I am not especially machmir when we're dealing with Bisharakam, as we saw a moment ago in Rowan Kafechai. It's in Nisidra Bonon. Nisidra Bonon by Sveikis, then a tea is Lakula. So I think snacks are not Oila al Shulchan Malach. So potatoes are definitely not Nechol Kemoy Shulchai. The Bissak Zilvishten gave a shear. And he spoke about potato chips. And he called it the Kloizam Gurevi. Kloizam Gurevi, when he spoke about the Shoya, about the Holocaust, he said, 
that if we could get our hands on a raw potato, that would be like a delicacy. Yes, those were different times. In the Holocaust, whatever you could eat. You ate grass, you ate leaves or the trees, you ate food that was decayed and rotten. But potatoes are definitely not nechol kamoshi chai. And on the other hand, I think chips, it's not a very fancy dish, but it still is oil al shulchan Snacks, not. Now, kings eat potato chips. I assume so. Their kids definitely eat bamba and biswi, whatever it is. But oil al shulchan is by a suudo, by a meal. And people don't serve popcorn or potato chips by meals, and definitely not by choshu by meals. And therefore, I don't think there's an Isla Bishalakim regarding the entire spectrum of snacks. Whatever would be served in a choshu by meal would be defined as by la How about chunt? Chunt is an interesting example. It's a chosh of a meal because it's a Shabbos de Kaddish. Shabbos. Shabbos is our most precious meal. But I don't think in the middle of the week I ever came anywhere and I was off a chunk. Only a Shiva boys Thursday night think it's a Mrs. Sasebi or Isaac to be chunk. There are a thousand stores and individuals in B'nai Barak and Yerushalayim. I would only guess and assume in Lakewood and in Borough Park as well. Thursday night, there's a huge industry selling chont and kugel. But when you come to a chasana, I don't know, usually they won't offer you chont. So would chont be oil and shulchan malochan or not? I don't know. This is something I contemplate. I would be machmir for the mere fact that a Shabbos de Gemil is a Chosh of the meal. The reason we don't usually eat on the middle of the week is not because it's not appealing, probably because, I don't know, it's defined as a Shabbos de Gemil. And maybe it's because of the Cheshivas of Shabbos. I would be Machmir. And generally, I am Machmir in the definition of Oil al because in my opinion, Shulchan Alochem is just a, a phrase. It shouldn't be taken literally. It's not about kings and queens and princesses and emperors. Shulchan Alochem is a chosh of a And it's very difficult to define because we live in a changing world with changing norms. And today's suddhas are much more spontaneous than they were in the past. Once upon a time, the Sudo was a big thing, a big event. It took hours for Oikra Mesashulchan. People were probably more machped about what they serve. Today, the world is more spontaneous, more natural. So it's hard clearly to define what is Ola Shulchan. However, the Gemara of the Zohar Amit Ches and the Rambam write, "Oyla Shulchan Melochem lelafis boyes apas," which means something that usually together 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 with bread. When you wash for a suda, what is offered in a normal meal that would be defined as oyla Shulchan Melochem. And therefore, in my opinion, snacks there would be no isra bishulah. Snacks are not an essential part of a suda of a meal, even though kings eat potato chips. Probably kings and their children eat mamba and bisli and all those common snacks and licorice and whatever it is. But they are not part of the Suda, and therefore they would not be defined as oil al shulchan Many years ago, Rabbi Shu and Neuviot, we had a very close relationship. When I was appointed to be the Poisik of Shari Tzedek, he was together with Rabbi Shu and Neuviot. And he was a huge Talmud Chochem, one of the greatest Talmud and Mother Bishop Zalman Oyerbach, and most well known, most famous for Sefer Shemir Shabbos Kelchosa. 
And he asked me about shawarma. So I don't know how exactly to do, describe shawarma, but it's a big chunk of meat on a spike, and the spike turns, and there's a fire, and that's the way it is. It is baked, and, and then you cut off from the sides around it. It's, it turns, and you cut it off, and that's shawarma. So each time you cut off the outer layer, you expose the inner layer to the fire, and that is heated up, and it becomes crisp and appealing and tasty. And in many of these shawarma stores, shawarma shops, the Arabs, young Arabs are the ones that cut the meat and put them into your lapa or into your pita, and that is the way people eat shawarma. So when you cut off that meat, you are exposing another layer of meat to fire. Would that be a chashash of bishulaku? So according to the Ramon, see if Zion shouldn't be a problem. I assume last week you learned the Machlekes Machab and the Ramon. The Ramon says if a Jew put on the initial fire, even though a nun Jew trances the fire from one place to the other, there is no chashash bishulaku. The Bishyosef maintains, no, it is only if the Jew actually is essential and useful in the actually cooking of the material. So according to the Ramo, I mean, the Jew put on the fire in the first place. So it makes no difference that an Arab cuts the meat and exposes the inner layer. But for the Svarim, according to the Bishyosef, would that be a problem? So Shukhanov writes, Ein shgira satana mo yara selo bapas, abal bishara mispashlem, Ein shgira satana va loyed lo kasowei shmala va moyred, ela hanoche davko, lefircha aroit selavashol, vamachvaz betana shaloi v'chobem, soro sheyitne yisro la machvaz ator chatana la moka maru in ispashol. The Ramo writes, Yeish cholken, v'svira leit leit lo kasowei sh, oi chito b'kichol emana l'inyem bishol, kamo l'inyem pas, v'chei no yagim. So according to the Ms. Yosef, would there be a problem with the shawarma? Because when the Arab cuts off meat from the outer layer, he exposes the inner layer, and he is the one that causes the bishu. In the letter I wrote to the Bishu and Ovid, I was Michael for two reasons. One reason is, it's somewhat of a groma. He's not putting it on the fire. But when he cuts away the outer layer, he is exposing the inner layer. And I brought sources that Kalama would not be an Isra of Bishonachim. But the more powerful reasoning is the Gemara Navadizor Alamet Chesom and Aleph. When the guy is not Machad in the Bashel, there is no Isra of Bishonachim. The Gemara tells a story of Goyim. That ignited the fire in a tunnel, not to cook or to bake, just for the benefit of cleaning the tunnel. And a Jew in advance put a piece of bread in the corner of the tunnel, which the guy weren't aware of. No, he said a bishulaku. And we find a few examples in that. If we could have it on the screen, might be useful. Avoid the solar lamet ches on there is no Yisabishalakam only if the guy has intention to cook. But when it's a Domeshaim is Chavan from his point of view, there would be no Yisab. Omar Rav Broina Omar Rav. It's about 15 lines from the top. Here. Omer of Broina, exactly with the yellow stops. Omer of Broina, Omer Rav. Oivet kechovim shetzit et ta'ur ba'agam. Kol ha'chagovim sheba'agam asurim. He just put on a fire in the field. He wanted to burn the thorns to clean the field. And there were grasshoppers, ha'chagovim, which are mutam ba'achila. Kol ha'chagovim sheba'agam asurim. Hei chadome. Ilai midalo yoda. I told I told my mother, 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 I told my
כי היה גם למי עושו. הוא אומר רב חונה ברמי, אומר רב פדס, אומר רב יוחן, היה וקירום דחורך רישא, שור על המייך על מנה אפילו מלא שהוא נהיה עלמא, לבור עיסא קום מכוון, אוכן אמה, לגלויה אג מקום מכוון. So the Gemara makes it clear. And God wanted to burn the wild grass of the field, just to clean the field. But he cooked locusts. Their mutter. He had no intention of cooking food. And I think when the guy cuts away the shawarma, he's just preparing a shawarma sandwich for the clients. The objective of what he's doing is not cooking the inner layer. That is just a result. Sooner or later, everything will be heated up. So his kavona is not visual. His kavona is just supplying the clients with the shawarma they're paying for. So for these reasons, I was mako. And as I said before, we're dealing with an Esad Rabbanon. And here this is Svora Gedoyla Lakula. That is our tradition of Pesach. So today's she was a supplementary share to the two previous ones. So I don't recall exactly what he said this year that you listened to last week. But today we discussed some additional shyness and aloha regarding the sugis of Hishul HaKum.